Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today, I'll have guests on that will be talking about a foundation here in our community. Also, I will have a guest on from the City of LaGrange Garage Department. So stay tuned for those interviews coming up in just a moment. Just what you're hungry for. It's in downtown LaGrange. You have 17 restaurants to choose from and each has its own personality. From chef-driven establishments to life on the casual side. Celebrate, create traditions, make new friends, discover new tastes. Downtown LaGrange is simply delicious. So come on down. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm sitting down with the founder and director of Anchor Foundation, Amir Cotton. Amir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with you to talk about some things that have been happening in our community. And you being the young lady that you are and having the support and the background that you have, I know that you won this kind of you know, really in the mix of things that's happening and, and really concerned, and I think it's a passion of yours uh, that lays and weighs heavily on your heart that we see something done about that. Right. Well, Mia, first, before we get into talking about Anchor Foundation, tell us a little bit about you, if you don't mind. Okay, well, um, I'm a Mia Cotton with the Troop County Anchor Foundation. Um, we started a little in 2013. Um, I graduated, I'm an alumni from Miles College in Birmingham, Alabama, and I moved back here in 2013. And um, with the numerous violence activities going on in the community, I got together with a group of friends and we started Troop County Anchor Foundation. Okay, very good. So a graduate of Miles College in, in Alabama, and I'm a graduate of Alabama myself okay. over in that area. <laughs> Um, so let me ask you now, Namia, it is so important because I've known you, as, as they were saying, knee hot to a duck, <laughs> and I know that you have a great support system. Talk a little bit about your support system, if you don't mind. Um, my support system consists of my mom, of course, um, my family, and my grandmother, um, God rest her soul, but I, had, I have a very, very strong support system who has stood behind me um, every step of the way telling me I can do it, encouraging me, even when times were hard. You know, just there, my sisters, friends, um, close family members, mentors. I mean, I just have a big group of support, of a support system that um, even when I thought I wasn't gonna make it, they were still encouraging me and telling me to keep the faith and you know, now I'm here. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's so important. I'm going to tie that in, your support system, into some of the things that we see and that you see uh, and through your Anchor Foundation in a moment or two. But tell us a little bit about your career. You've chosen a career path too, Mia. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that and why you made the decision. <laughs> well, I have a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something that I have a passion for. It's something that I love. Um, I'm a probation officer for the city of Hogansville. And I wanted to get into criminal justice because some things I agree with the justice system and some things I don't. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to actually come in as a change to mentor, to try to help someone. Um, I believe in the saying, reach one, teach one. And if I feel like I can just re reach one um, that I come in contact with, I feel like my job has been done. Okay. Absolutely. It is so important. And, you know, being a probation officer, I'm, seeing, I'm sure that you see a number of clients come through yes. your office and, and perhaps some you have to shake your head at and discuss and ask the question, why are you here? Right, you right. Know. And, and some, and everything, every person that goes on probation is not a bad person. Um, sometimes, you know, things just, things happen and mm -hmm. um, some people make mistakes. So every person that goes on probation, you know, is not a bad person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like still should be treated like a, you know, a human being just because they may have done something different doesn't mean they're any better or any less. Mm -hmm. So if I could just reach and say, hey, you know, what's going on? What happened? And we can kind of talk about it. And after that experience on probation, I have good experiences. I have bad experiences. But some of them I try to reach and say, hey, you know, this is just a mistake you made. This doesn't have to overcome you. You don't have to dwell in it. You can move on and still make a career for your life. So if I, like I say, if I could just reach one, mm -hmm. then I feel like my job has been done. Absolutely. And you'd be surprised that even that extra sense of caring 
that you know listening right how much that makes a difference in that individual's life right because yeah. like you know like I said before everyone is not fortunate enough to have a support system That's I was right. blessed to have that uh -huh. and um, I share my story sometimes you know I'm not I'm not always this person that you see now you know everyone goes through different trials and can overcome things uh -huh. I mean I I was a the teenage pregnancy mm -hmm. I had my daughter when I was 18 I got pregnant when I was 17 mm -hmm. but I had a good support system and I didn't let that overcome my situation Absolutely. I still moved on and I was able to accomplish some things now everyone sometimes is not as fortunate as I am to have a support system uh -huh. so if I could go and support that teenage girl or that young male and just be there for an encouraging word mm -hmm. it will help absolutely absolutely and let's talk a little bit about your anchor foundation again something that I feel like uh, I remember you came to the mayor and council and talked about the, the your vision about the anchor foundation right. and your passion for the things that were happening talk about your foundation well um, the foundation started in 2013 uh -huh. from um, violence that was occurring in the community and it was just like a few of us came together and we were just like no something has to be done um, we start putting on different activities we met with mayor, council, uh, the sheriff, police, uh, police chief, mm -hmm. and other community leaders as well who wanted to see something that young adults could put on or youth could get involved with. Mm -hmm. And um, they was all very supportive of the idea. And we got together and we've been putting on events since then, being in the community, helping other organizations, other organizations helping us, partnering with us. Okay. And it's just been successful from day one. Oh, very good. And you know, we're talking about violence in the community and you and I were talking before we came mm -hmm. on. And it seems like every day or every other day in the news and the media we see and not only you know other cities, but we're talking about right here in right, LaGrange, Georgia right, now, right. Troop County, that someone has been a, a victim of you know a shooting or domestic violence or things of that nature. How do you want your foundation to try to help to address those issues? Um, I want us to address the issue by first figuring out what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, by first going in, not to um, scold them or beat them down. Um, we want to try to lift them up, even the ones that are committing the crimes, because something is wrong. And even if we could just go out and um, talk and say, well, you know, hey, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Just to reach somebody, because it's it's a problem. And um, some of them does, don't have that affection, that love. Um, just someone to say, hey, how was your day? Mm -hmm. Some people don't have that. So we could just go out and mentor and just reach them to say, hey, we're here. Um, we're not condoling what you're doing mm -hmm. and we want it to stop, but we're here and you can change your life. Absolutely. But we just want to come in and just reach somebody, um, not to talk down to them or just to beat them up. We just want to be there to say, hey, Anchor Foundation is here and we support everyone we don't condone what you do we right. don't like it uh -huh. but we're here to support you whether that be consequences with your actions mm -hmm. but we're here to support you to say hey you still can be forgiven that's right and, you know it's so important and, and you kind of alluded to it in your in your conversation Elmia, talking about some of the things support system being one what do you see as some of the other causes of individuals going out and, and you say getting to the point of anger that they feel like they just have to take a person's life or retaliate against someone because they did something? What do you see as other problems or, or causes of that? I think sometimes it could be um, they want to feel that love and affection that they may not be getting at home. Mm -hmm. um, they want to become of something. Um, sometimes it could be a lack of parenting. Um, I also believe that, and sometimes they just want to belong. I feel that sometimes that they, they just they just want to belong to something, okay. mm -hmm. even though it's not good, but they want to belong to something. That's right. And that game, if you're not getting it at home, and you can get it from someone out here in the street who's saying, "Hey, I'm gonna put some money in your pocket," mm -hmm. or "I'm going to be that brotherly love," or something, then they feel like, "Hey, that's my family." There you go. Absolutely. Well, talk about some of the things that you all have done in the Anchor Foundation that have been a positive impact mm -hmm. that you feel on the community? 
Well, um, our first event we did was Taking Care at Home in 2013, where we basically, it was our way of giving back to the community. We gave away book bags, school supplies, um, food. We had motivational speakers. We had singing, the karate kids. It's just a way of saying, hey, introducing ourselves to the community and giving back. Um, last year, we did the CDY Field Day, which was um, very great. It showed law enforcement interacting with the community, playing basketball. Uh, I say we brought it back field day in an old school way, how we, okay. used, to, how we used to remember field day. And uh -huh. um, it was just good activities, good fun, good laughter. Um, just a day in the community. We gave away a $500 book scholarship as well. And we gave away door prizes, um, basketball tournament. It was just a fun field day. Okay. And this year on August the 15th at LaGrange College Price the uh, Theater, mm -hmm. Troop County Anchor Foundation, along with um, West Georgia Stars, um, Ashley Cousins and her group, um, Chad Cooper, he's actually a representative from West Georgia Stars working with the Housing Authority, okay. the mm -hmm. Sheriff Department, Police Department, and other organizations. We're getting together and we're putting on a retrospective visual, a time of healing. And it's going to be at LaGrange Price the Theater at okay. 3 o'clock. And we're actually, um, our speaker is going to be Kit Cummings. And we are actually just saying that we are here for the families that who have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be a, your support group. We want to be your support system because we're also forming a support group as well, okay. along with that, partnering up with LaGrange um, Police Department. But it's just going to be a day of healing, and because we ne we need that time and show we want to show the community that we hear you, we feel your pain. And some of, the, some of the violence have even affected us. Mm -hmm. So we're just calling it a day of healing. And it's going to be a visual, and um, it's going to be August the 15th. August the 15th. Starting at what time? 3 o'clock at LaGrange College Price Theater. Okay, very good. Mia, how can people that may be watching, how can they get involved with, with um, you and Anchor Foundation? They can contact us on Facebook at Troop County um, Anchor Foundation. Also, um, our email is anchorfoundation at yahoo.com. Our P.O. Box is 2701 LaGrange, Georgia, if you want to write out to us or send different flyers. Um, we love working with different other organizations. Also, we just uh, recently partner up with Nate Newson and David Simpson, who's mm -hmm. been doing the Unity Walks in LaGrange. They're having another one coming up on June 28th, mm -hmm. um, a Unity Walk that they're sponsoring. We help, you know, as, as along with them. Um, they're going to meet up at Nile Street Park at 530. So if anyone is not doing anything, come to the Unity Walk. Let's help support these guys in their march against violence as well. Very good. Mia, there's so many things going on in the community. <laughs> I'm just glad that you were part of it. I've seen the Unity Walk and was a part of their uh, out-of-school summer program there. Yeah, at the bar it's, it's a great thing. Um, great thing. Nate and David, they contacted me, and I was like, of course, anything that we can do. And it's just been so successful. This last walk that we had, it was over 200 people. And we wearing white T-shirts because it's a sign of peace. And mm -hmm. we're not we're not saying rest in peace. We're saying live in peace. Live in and peace. it's something that Nate and David came up with, and I feel like that's going to be successful as well. Very Just good. to march around the city in the communities where the violence are taking place at to say, hey, we're going to stand against violence, and we're going to stand and come together. So Nate and David, they came together with that idea, and we're supporting it every step of the way. Very good. Mia, thank you very much for being on the show today and I wish you very much success thank with you. the Anchor Foundation and the partnership with the other uh, community organizers that are trying to do something con to combat the violence in our community right. because it has to stop. It does. It has it to does. stop. So thank you very much for being thank on the show today. Thank you for having today. me. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Week in just a moment. what you're looking for. You'll find it in one of the 28 shops in downtown LaGrange. Remember old school customer service? It's still here. Not to mention that perfect gift. That's the beauty of downtown LaGrange. So come on down. Welcome back City Week, ladies and gentlemen. 
Now I am sitting down with the fleet services manager from the City of LaGrange Garage Department, Tommy Brown. Tommy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with you. And, and I know when people hear the City of LaGrange Garage, they probably have no idea what the garage does, but you're the gentleman that's there each and every day and work with the staff that you have to, and, and we're going to talk about, talk about working from weed eaters all the way to the big uh, compactors out at the uh, landfill. But before we get into talking about all that, Tommy, tell us a little bit about yourself, if you don't mind. Well, uh, kind of interesting. I actually started with the city in 1973. Uh -huh. uh, I was in a co-op program from Troop Tech at the time, which is now West Georgia Technical College. But uh, it was where you went to school a quarter and then you worked in the field a quarter. Okay. And I was uh, working and had the opportunity to uh, work for the city this particular quarter. And I really just went there to complete that quarter and then I was going back to school. Well, my boss man, he, he came up and said, we'd like to have you to stay with us. Said, would you consider uh, going to school at night and uh, staying on with us? And uh -huh. I said, well, I really wanna get uh, finished with my school. And he said the magic word, said, well, we will pay for your school <laughs> <laughs> if you will continue to work. So uh -huh. uh, I, I actually continued to work and uh, worked my way up through the different facets of uh, the shop and everything. And in 1988 was promoted to superintendent. So, oh, wow. and have run the facility since then. Uh -huh. uh, seen a lot of changes over the years. Uh, when I first went to work for the city, our police department probably had a fleet of 10 vehicles and including the meter made oh, yeah. uh, vehicles and everything. You that's, may remember yeah, some remember of those, those. That's right. uh, a long time ago. Yeah. And we even had motorcycles. That's right. uh, but now our fleet is probably around 150 just in the police department with the take home vehicles and everything. Right. So I okay. uh, have seen a lot of changes over the years and uh, we actually built the facility we're in now in 1987. Okay, so. Right. 19, so 1973, Tommy. I, I think back to that, I'm trying to calculate how old I was at that <laughs> time. So, but y you've been with the city almost 42 years now, right? Yes, sir. And you, and you talked about the change within the police department alone, going from about 10 vehicles or, or pieces of equipment to over 160 now. Citywide, just round ballpark figure, piece of equipment. Uh, just equipment wise, we probably maintain close to 1,200 pieces of equipment. Oh my. Uh, we're kind of a unique city in a few facets because one of the things that we do is we actually operate our own gas division, we operate our own electric division. A lot of cities don't, don't have those utilities. Mm -hmm. So we get into the trenchers, the bucket trucks that a lot of cities don't. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we've got more backhoes than a, a lot of larger cities do because okay. of that. Uh, and, you know, it's, we're different because I've, I've actually got a staff of 16 people. Okay, I was wondering and, about that. And that's uh, myself, a coordinator, a uh, secretary, and then the rest are production type. I've got four different levels of production type mechanics. I okay. go from a, mechanic apprentice uh, through a mechanic three, the mechanic three being my most experienced technician. Okay. And then we've got uh, two welder fabricators. And uh, part of what they do is maintain the commercial uh, containers that we use with our commercial sanitation program. Okay, okay. Uh, we, uh, in, in doing what we do, uh, you take we, we work on weed eaters on one end of the spectrum and we work on the compactors and the crawler tractors on the other end. And one of the things that you get into is if an individual is carrying their car to be repaired, they're gonna carry it to a dealership. That's if right. they're carrying mm -hmm. uh, a big heavy truck, it's got to go to a big shop. The weed eaters go to a small engine shop and mm -hmm the you know cat equipment would go to the heavy engine well we we go across the board with that so That's my right. technicians have to be you know pretty well versed on on the repair of anything from a 
weed eater up to a crawler tractor, including tire repair. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, when you're talking about the gamut there from weed eaters to the big piece of equipment, and you talked about you have four types of mechanic and the level three is your, your most uh, experienced, I guess. So you basically, all of these individuals are certified individuals in the areas that they? They have a lot of different, I have a lot of different uh, ASC certified technicians okay. in different fields and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I will kind of brag on one of my uh, tech threes that works at my landfield. He, he went to a uh, competition. Uh, he went last year and uh -huh. he won the state competition in a, in a rodeo in the state right. and went to uh, Denver last year and competed and, and got second in the country. Uh, and this year he has won the state competition again and will be going to the national competition. So I remember. Real, real proud of that for That's him. Right. So. Uh, yeah, my, my techs are, are very, very experienced. They are good technicians. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And they really put out a lot. So Absolutely. Real proud of all of them. And, and, and I wanted to ask the question because most of the time, you guys, you are the, for better term, you are the, the other dealerships out there in the general public. When there's a problem with our vehicle, we bring it to you. How is it that you all are able to provide the services that you provide to us? At a, Minimal to less expensive cost. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, my department is an internal service function, mm -hmm. meaning that uh, our customers are the user departments. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we bill back our labor rate, we bill back a parts markup and a fuel surcharge. And that actually covers the cost of the operations of our facility. Uh, so it's uh, like animal control may have five vehicles and you know I'm billing them back uh, uh, two percent of my annual budget. Where sanitation has a tremendous amount of vehicles, and I'm billing them you know 45 percent of right. my annual budget. So okay. it's just distributed evenly across the city okay. to okay. all the user departments. Absolutely. And uh, our labor rate is actually a lot lower than the outside uh, because. One of the things that we don't have to do as an internal service function of the city is mm -hmm. we don't have to make a profit for uh, stockholders or anything. Right. So we, mm -hmm. can, we can reduce that down mm -hmm. and hold our costs down. Okay, and, and you're talking about that, and I, I know that you know, from anything from a wall chain to wiper blades, just anything that you would take your vehicle outside of an organization like yourself can be done there. Um, talk a little bit about um, how people, if someone was watching today and, and, and hear you and your story of going, going through the co-op program and you know, really have an interest and a desire to want to work in, a, in an organization like that, how can they uh, go on the website and find out more about your organization? Well, they can go on the city website uh, if we have job openings and everything. One thing that I think is unique about us is because we are, are so diverse with our equipment, I can't go out here and just pick up a technician that knows everything about all the equipment that we have. So mm -hmm. we have to do a lot of uh, hands-on training and in-house training. So okay. uh, if an individual is willing to come in with a good attitude and everything, we can we can take the time to train them on the different equipment we have okay. and put them with seasoned technicians and everything. So career-wise, I think we have a, a good opportunity for an individual, individuals that are seeking uh, the automotive industry Absolutely. in our area. Absolutely. You know, I, I've been to the shop there a number of times and, you know, seen the, the garage facility itself, you know, grow over the course of time. Tell me, uh, the viewing also where you guys are uh, located, if you don't mind, Tom. Well, we're at 211 Hill Street. And mm -hmm. like I say, we went over there in 1987 mm -hmm. uh, and it was kind of a rundown part of the city when we acquired that property and everything. So we were welcomed in the community over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've actually done a, a couple of different uh, expansions because of growing pains and everything. That's we right. we uh, originally went in with a building that housed some equipment that couldn't get, uh, in the winter time you had to house it because it kept water in it for uh -huh. like jet cleaning, sewer jet cleaning and all. Well, we've taken that and made a welding shop out of it, and then we've taken a building that uh, used to be at our cemetery, mm -hmm. and we put, they took it down at the cemetery, we put it up at our facility, 
and now that's my small engine shop. So, okay. uh, and then I want to say three, four years ago, we did a, a big expansion to our building itself. So, okay. Okay. Uh, we've been going through uh, some expansions over there, and that's a lot right. of people wouldn't even know <laughs> what it was. Absolutely. You know, and, and I want to just kind of brag on your staff as well. You know, every time I've come over, it's always been very professional gentlemen and ladies there as well. Um, and then they, you know, get your car in and get it out. And I want to ask about you, how do your services compare as far as turnaround time? And I know you may not be giving an, an appro approximation, but how does your turnaround time compare to outside sources, you think? One of the things that uh, we do that is different from the outside agencies is uh, if if we go to an outside agency for repair, mm -hmm. then we're just the next number in line. Where if uh, we can change our priorities and the importance depending on, uh, you know, police and fire mm -hmm. is, is always a high priority. Okay. So we turn those around. Our commercial sanitation program is, is, a, is a big pressure cooker for us because of the industry we That's have right. to support because uh, the waste stream has to keep moving. And so that's a big, uh, big part of it. But uh, what we do, about the only thing I get, uh, catch any flack, I guess I'll say about <laughs> is, is, uh, is an oil change uh -huh. because uh, we are going to see that vehicle again. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes in for an oil change, we make sure that we go in depth, we pull the tires, we check the brakes, we check everything on that vehicle where if you go to a tire service and lube to get your car uh -huh. just the oil change, that's what they're going to do. That's right. Uh, so we don't want a vehicle to come into us and say that uh, we do an oil change today and you bring, you send that vehicle back to me two days later with the brakes right. making a noise. So right. uh, that impairs your operations uh, where if I've got that vehicle over there, then I go ahead and correct all the problems we see checker. on it. So that's Absolutely. about the only thing that we, we catch some flack on because people <laughs> say, you know, I can go to the 30 minute lube and get an oil change and, right. you know, it takes you a lot longer. I, well, we go a little bit a more bit in depth. And, Absolutely. Uh, so not in comparison. Okay. Well, very good. Well, Tommy, we do appreciate you being on the show today. And I know that you guys do a wonderful job. I know the times I brought my vehicle over, it's always been in and out. So I thank you very much. And, and, and congratulations on being here for so many number of years. I think you probably, probably maybe the third longest employee, employed person with the city of LaGrange, perhaps. Someone in that neighborhood? I think right now I'm probably the longest term. Longest term? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. From hire date. Well, very so. good. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today, Tom. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more City Weekend in just a moment. Why United Way? Because 99 cents of every dollar donated to United Way of West Georgia stays right here to help your neighbors. Yes, 99 cents. United Way makes every penny count. You can count on United Way, and United Way of West Georgia is counting on you. Please give today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining City Week this week. My guests have been from the Troop Anchor Foundation, Amelia Cotton, as she talked about an upcoming program that's scheduled on August the 15th over at the LaGrange Price Theater, and also how they're partnering with other organizations to combat violence here in our community. So by all means, if you can get involved to help stop the violence, please let's do so, ladies and gentlemen. Also, I had on from the City Garage, the Fleet Services Manager, Tommy Brown, as he talked about how they are able to maintain over 1,200 pieces of equipment throughout the city of LaGrange. Ladies and gentlemen, that is quite a feat. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed these interviews, and if always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week.